What's going on everyone? Steven here, back with a new tutorial for you. Today I'm going to be talking about hacking WebAssembly games. Um, towards the end of the video I'll be going more into what WebAssembly is for those of you who are interested, but suffice to say this is where many feel the future of gaming in the browser is heading. So instead of Flash or Silverlight or whatever else you might play a game in within the browser, this WebAssembly is the next hot ticket. All right, so there's not much out there for it right now, game-wise, but as WebAssembly gets more and more popular, that's going to change. Uh, I'm going to be using Firefox for this because at the moment WebAssembly runs the best in Firefox, and that's because they're basically the ones spearheading uh, this whole WebAssembly thing. So. Um, since we're running Firefox, um, to find the correct process to open with Cheat Engine is a bit different than in Chrome. If you're interested in finding out how to hack Flash games in Chrome, I have a video that you can go check out that I'll link to in the description below. Uh, that'll show you how to attach there. But this is also applicable for attaching to Flash games in Firefox. All right, so what you want to do is open a new tab in Firefox and type About Performance. And you'll get this that'll pop up. All right, and so what you want to do is whichever tab your game is in. So right now, this tab is called Funky Carts Demo. All right, I want to find that here. now. We see it here, Funky Carts Demo. If I didn't see it in these top three, you could just click Show All, and that would show all of your tabs. So, see how this moved? Funky Carts Demo, I'm going to click More. And down here we see Processes, and then we see this. It doesn't say Processes, plural, just Process. Anyway, this 2672, okay, we need to convert that to hexadecimal. So, we can just go to Google and go 2672 to hex. And here we go, A70. That's what we want to find. So let's click this here in Cheat Engine and look for A70 Firefox. That's the one we want. All right, so now we can click on that. And WebAssembly, the way it runs, um, it's more or less like you're not playing a browser-based game. Just assume that you've downloaded from Steam a fully-fledged game. Think of it like that, all right? So we can just keep this on four bytes, all right? And the first thing that we're going to search for in here is coins, because that's an easy thing, okay? So I got one coin there. I'm going to go ahead and search for one. All right, now I'm going to resume. That's a second coin. I'm going to search for two. All right, there's two more, so now I have four coins. All right, well, we're whittling it down. All right, I'm going to collect this last coin, and let's see which, one is, which ones of these change. Maybe one will change faster than the others, and that should be our value. All right, here, this one changed to a five. There were other ones that changed, but they changed to different numbers. Let's change this to a 99. Come back in here, collect a coin. All right, did you see up there on the upper right-hand side it said 101? So this is our coin value. So there we go. We found coins. Super, super easy. And now, because of the way WebAssembly runs, the instruction writing to this is the same instruction that also controls other things. Okay, so... Because of that, you can find some other things very easily. Let, like, let's say this timer that's running here, right? So what I'm going to do is right-click on this value and say, find out what writes to this address. Now, I'm sure instructions that read from it, it's more or less the same. Um, I haven't dug too much into that yet. I just started futzing with this a little while ago and thought it would be cool to do a video on. But anyway, I'm going to click play here collect a coin somewhere and uh whoa come on guy there we go okay 
So now I'm going to collect a coin, and that should trigger the instruction that writes. All right, it's this one here. So I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to click Show Disassembler. And now this instruction does a lot of things, as you'll see. So I'm going to right-click on here and say Find Out What Addresses This Instruction Accesses. And we're going to watch this window here. All right, so I died. We see whatever this is is continuously running. See our timer here? Um, that kicked off, and these two values down here are running. This one's counting up. This one's kind of changing from time to time. So it looks like these might be our timer values right here. So, um, like, what else could we see that changes here? Okay, this top value here changes from 3 to 12. So when it's paused, it's 12. Uh, when it's unpaused, it's 3. So we could say uh, copy selected address to the address list down here. Let's lock it on 12 and see what happens when we try to unpause it. We can't unpause. All right, so who knows? Maybe there would be a reason for you to have that uh, in a script. but. So now what you could do is to try to discern some things, like one thing from another out of all this, since this is a shared instruction. You could try to um, do data dissect. You could show register states and look in all the registers and see if you can find discernible traits. I think R12 and R13, when I was initially messing around, were unique identifiers so that I could um, discern coins from whatever else and you know the timer and everything like that so um, anyway that's basically it in terms of hacking WebAssembly games at the moment in the browser um, so just download Cheat Engine if you don't have it yet for some reason and you found your way to this video <laughs> and uh, get to hacking away. For those of you who are interested in more about WebAssembly, um, it's very fascinating. I'm going to leave some links in the description, and um, there are some incredible demos out there already. And it's more or less like a way to run native C and C++ code in the browser and in a super performant way running natively on your system. But more than that, WebAssembly... So let's say you develop an application in C or C++ and then you compile it to WebAssembly. Someone can then load that WebAssembly on their phone, on their PC, so whether it's an ARM processor or Intel, uh, that WebAssembly will perform as if it's a native application on that platform. Um, so it's kind of incredible. Anyway, so um, here's uh, a... this is an article that I'm also going to have down below that shows you how to debug WebAssembly because right now, like, I'm going to go back here in this game and I'm going to bring up this and on the debugger here in Firefox. Now in Chrome it looks kind of like, well, let's see, there's the text format, right? So WebAssembly looks, the text format looks like this. And the binary looks like this. So this is what you would pretty much see in Chrome in the best case scenario. But in Firefox right now, because like I said, they're the ones spearheading this whole thing, you can dive in here and debug WebAssembly a little more easily. So it says, please refresh to debug this module. I'm going to refresh the page now. And here we can see everything that loads from this WebAssembly file. All right, so eventually, I'm not sure if, you know, diving through here we can see like variable names like I imagine coin or timer or something like that unfortunately my searches didn't yield anything like that but at some point especially if WebAssembly really takes off I think P 
people will figure out ways to make it significantly easier um, to hack a WebAssembly game as if it's like a mono game where you can just decompile it and you've basically got the code right there in front of you and you can modify things like that. Um, but anyway, if you want to futz around with WebAssembly and writing some yourself, um, I'll post this article, which will kind of get your feet wet with that. And finally, let's see, there's this GitHub, the WebAssembly Binary Toolkit. And I think this was made by, yeah, the main folks um, behind the WebAssembly dev at the moment. So with this, you have certain tools like um, the WASM to Watt. So that's like the binary to text. So that if you download, like from a site, this WASM file and you try to open it in something like Notepad, it's not going to be in a readable format for you like that. You'll have to use these tools to do stuff like that. So, anyway, like I was saying, this stuff is a ways out, probably a year or two or three easily, but, um, you know, I'm enjoying getting. Uh, kind of a leg up on it now because I really do think this is where the future of browser-based um, not just games but I think all kinds of other applications this is where it's gonna happen but anyway hope you enjoyed this little video uh, give me a thumbs up if you did don't forget to subscribe and I'll just talk to you all in the next one alright take care